Shalom, beloved. Word. One of the things I wanted to go into is the devil shows himself as an angel of light, the enemy. But at the same time, they will show you the hand they're playing. It'll throw it right in your face. And many of us being distracted by the truth that's a lie or the lie that's the truth won't recognize that in the arrogance of the enemy, they'll tell you what they're doing and deny it. What do I mean? The Forever Purge. We have seen this movie come out multiple times. Okay, The Purge, Purge One, and so forth. But we never connected to the fact that they're trying to depopulate. Depopulate. Hmm. And one of the things which I'm showing here is the forever purge. Rules have changed. Rules have changed. Many people think because something's right up in their face that, oh, the person wouldn't do it. They wouldn't be that bold. Why wouldn't they? So when you see this piece, the purge, it may be that the enemy is telling you they're doing it and you just don't see it. And the title even. Rules have changed. From the moment these movies started coming out, I remember thinking, whom would they want to purge? Hmm. Which groups of people would they want to get rid of? When you see this purge and they're using all type of devices and acting demonic and many weapons, the one thing you have to remember is they take crafty counsel, beloved, crafty counsel. They will use any and every weapon necessary. And if one delusion, one lie, one deception doesn't work, they'll come another way. The fact that these movies, The Purge, keeps coming out and no, I did not look at this movie, but I've seen other ones. All bets is off. They shut down the world or the areas they're purging. Hmm. Have we seen anything shut down where during that time, the rules change? Beloved, one of the things that we read in the word, it tells us to watch. You have to watch because many times in their arrogance and in their madness, they will tell you what they're doing. So it's like if a disease keeps changing and we're trying to save you. Hmm. Or you look at a propaganda machine and suddenly now this machine cares about you. Although what your eyes see societally tell you, I don't remember when you ever cared about me. But now, angel of deceptive light, I should trust you. Hmm. Sometimes it's right in your face. It's right in your face. Maybe, and this is just one subject, one topic I wanted to cover. Maybe, instead of thinking you're being entertained by a movie, maybe you're in the midst of the attempted purge. Just a thought. All right, beloved, there's something else I want to share with you. Many people, because they have been taught uh, forgiveness and they think no matter what an enemy does to you, you got to forgive, you got to forgive, you got to forgive. You have murderers running around destroying Yasharet. Some of the two thirds destroy Yasharet. But those who come out of Christianity, and I was raised in a Baptist church, but you see, the most high, the spirit of truth testifies in my spirit, lead me to all truth. Any of us does ever wrestle with what are people doing standing up, looking at Edom and different people who have murdered their loved ones, saying, I forgive you. You've been taught some delusion. 
Because I'm going to tell you what the Most High says, so there's no confusion. Okay. This is, forgive me, I, I want to get the book right. Uh, yeah. This is, I'm trying to remember because this is dual. Which book? Cities of Refuge. They're in Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the book of Joshua. I believe I'm coming from the book of Joshua. Okay, but I'm showing you. And forgive me because I'm all over. But if any man hate his neighbor and lie and wait for him and rise up against him and smite him mortally that he die and flee to one of these cities, what cities? They're talking about the cities of refuge that the Most High created. Okay, but if any man hate his neighbor, you see, there are people who hate their neighbor and lie and wait for him and rise up against him and smite him mortally that he die and flee into one of these cities. Then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die. Now, to bring it another way, I'm coming to the end. Thine eye shall not pity him. You have people start crying and, Lord, I'm going to pray for you. They done murdered your family member and you've been taught. Uh, uh, I feel so bad for them. You, your people laying up in the graveyard. Somewhere in there, it got twisted. And we're going to untwist it. Okay. Thine eye shall not pity him. But thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. You see, when you pity them, it's not going to go well with you. Why? Because you're giving them license to do what they have done through forgiveness. No, 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 no. There is something called justice justice and justice doesn't sit there and say well it's okay if this person killed that person we're gonna run up in here with forgiveness this same group of people who have no forgiveness in them no no i didn't say run around with hate in your heart i said run around with the justice and the truth of the most high in your heart Thine eye shall not pity him. What does that mean? If you run around forgiving, I feel sorry for them. I, I, I just want that Lord to get that soul and the Lord carry him on the glory. I'm not going to forgive you if you take my child out. You're not getting it. No. And I believe in the Most High. Spirit of the Most High with me. I will not pity you. So we're going to untwist some of this twistedness. And yes, beloved. We just going to talk because I hear it all the time. We post to forgive. I don't know who. Do you forgive your neighbor? Yes. 77 times. I know, but not for murder. See, that's when justice comes in. Justice comes. Let the Lord deal with him. That's when justice comes. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, no, no. No, that baby ain't getting up out that grave, y'all. You got people running around here sanctioned by the government that are committing murder. And some folks run up in the courtroom and I forgive you. Let me tell you what the Lord said. But if any man hate his neighbor and lie and wait for him and rise up against him and smite him mortally that he died, and flee if in one of these cities, they had cities of refuge. See, the cities of refuge were to protect people who did it unintentionally, accidentally. And the avenger of blood, that family member, they coming. They knew it. They coming. Okay. Let them go to the city of refuge. The one who did it unintentionally. But that's not who we talking about. Because people, some people just throwing forgiveness around like it don't matter what you do. That's a lie. 
okay? But if any man hate his neighbor and lie and wait for him and rise up against him and smite him mortally that he die and flee from one of these cities, then the elders of the city shall sin and fetch him thence and deliver him into the hand mm, of the avenger of blood that he may die. See, they not getting these light sentences when you committed murder in front of everybody. When everybody know you committed murder, when they got it on tape, that's corruption. Okay. Corruption of the law. They are laws unto themselves, which makes them lawless. But for those who got them tender hearts, them tender hearts. I'm going to go with what the Lord said. Let's check it out. Thine eye shall not pity him. But thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. Well with thee. Well, beloved. Well. You got a man over in New Jersey who was harassing blacks, African Americans, Hebrews. And this was going on for years, four years, if I got it correct. And only when somebody put it on tape did they lock him up. And then they were going to lightly charge him until the people were in the uproar in Jersey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you get this so-called black, Hebrew, Israelite, whatever, who said uh, he got a mental health issue. The man been treated. What is wrong with you? And he mistreating your own. Huh. No, 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 no. Thine eye shall not pity him. I'm trying to figure out, did they show pity for the other? That doesn't even speak about the fact that these officers of the law knew what he was doing. He's hunting Yasharel, African-Americans, blacks, harassing them. They can't live in peace. And the lawless law knew it. And it just went on and on and on. No, there ain't going to be no pity. Whatever the law says should be done, should be done. Now, one of the final things I wanted to talk about, because there's a lot on my mind, like it's been laying on my spirit. Oh, you can be forgiven, but I'm not going to pity you. You kill my loved one in cold-blooded murder, which is what has been going on in this country. Before you run up and forgive or look for it from me, mine I shall not be pitying you. And I'm going by my father, okay? We're going to untwist the twisted idea of what is forgiveness. There's a such thing as justice. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, life for life, okay? Mm. I'm, I'm just telling you because I'm seeing in the news where somehow Hebrew Israelites, Blacks, African Americans, we running up, I forgive you. I'm not forgiving you. Let's be clear. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm going to, here's where I will be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thine eye shall not pity him. You put my baby in the grave? Mm -mm. We got to balance the books. You go in the grave. You go. I'm going for justice. Why? We're going to put away the guilt of innocent blood. Okay? Some of y'all don't give your enemy power to feel right in an unholy act. But thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel that it may go well with thee. That it may go way met nah. Whoo. That it may go well with you. See what I'm saying? You're not going to get good forgiving evil. No, you're not. No, you're not. Read it now. Thine eye shall not pity him. I don't. I, I, where's the part where you say forgive him, man? Because what? Where is it at? I'm talking murder, baby. Where is it at? Did I miss it? Mm, mm. Let's get it right. Because some a twist. And see that enemy nation. Let me eat them mites. You got to be forget. Ain't nobody forgiving you, and you ain't did a damn thing but be born with some tone on you. Let me finish. Thine eye shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Yashorel, that it may go well with thee. 
keep no murderer around, forgiving him, hmm. running up, giving him Bible in court. So it looked like, well, maybe we shouldn't send her away to what's wrong with I'm going with the Lord, but let me keep moving. Let me keep moving. I got to make sure that I got it right because I wanted to show this other piece. See, a lot of people think, well, that's just for Yashrael. Mm -mm. This last piece on that conversation. There shall be one law. Let me get it. Me, can I make this bigger? Forgive me, beloved. Can I make it bigger? There it is. There shall be one law for you and for the resident stranger. What's that mean? That them people that live amongst you that are not Yashifra. Mm. There shall be one law for you and for the resident stranger. It shall be a law for all time throughout the ages. So when you're looking for justice, when you're trying to find out why, first of all, we know we live in a fetid, corrupt system. This is about as lawless as they get. But you need to understand what Yahuwah says. The same thing that applies to Yashorea applies to the stranger. Okay, the resident stranger. Well, we didn't choose to come here. We know how we got here. So them resident strangers, that same law applies. Now, we know that's not the case as far as the corrupt lawless ones, but I'm telling you what the Most High said. Now, I just want to go a little bit further, beloved. I'm walking around. As a matter of fact, the one thing that I keep seeing and I know I sound like I digress, but it's on my mind. I want to go into truth, truth, truth right now. Truth, beloved, truth. We know that this passage has a lot more to it, but I'm using first verse. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hmm. My people suffer for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay. Right now, there is a heavy-handed group of people running through Yasharel's neighborhood, particularly in the city, taking their homes away from them because of lack of knowledge, lack knowledge beloved you live in the neighborhood these people are supposed to be coming in restoring revitalizing they're gentrifying and stealing the land they're doing what they did when they first got here i find it amazing that these pre-existing neighborhoods that were filled with yasharel people call us blacks african americans been in for decades they did not come and revitalize or restore. They let it just run amok. But when the Edomites come, suddenly there's restoration, there's, there's a new building going up and revitalization, and suddenly the home Yasharel had in the neighborhood Yasharel grew up in, at first is made to seem as though you're making it beautiful for us. No, you're being set up to be robbed. Remember the people robbed and spoiled. But we're going to get a little bit of knowledge on this because you see the curses in reverse. They're coming in the cities. They knock on people's doors and they tell you your house is worth th this amount. And all of a sudden, people are being flooded with home office. We want to buy your home. 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 They're offering them 60, 70, 80,000. But remember what I told you about lack of knowledge. They want to pay 60, 70, 80,000 dollars for your house. And because many people haven't had that much money all at one time, particularly younger generations who inherited grandmama house, Aunt Effie house, or whoever, cousin Fred that died, they're ready to grab that money and run, thinking they got the better end of the deal. But what they did not do 
was understand the true value if the Edomites are moving in and trying to take it from you. These people are going into the inner city where there was no money, suddenly all this money is available. Like the tax money that many brothers and sisters paid that was never spent in their neighborhood. Suddenly it's coming through like a flood for the other guy. But to stay on point, offering them $68,000. And because my people perish for lack of knowledge, they think that's a lot of money, never understanding that. They're going in, they put in twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of upgrade, sell this same house for two hundred and fifty, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You can't move back in the neighborhood because you can't afford the neighborhood you were in. You didn't even get the value you could have got for your house because they know you don't know what's going on. There are corporations coming in the brothers and sisters' neighborhoods acting as though they care and they want to offer you money for your home. And they're all over the place. They're flooding the mail. They're knocking on people's doors. Beloved, they ain't never meant you any good. And just like they came into the land and took the Indians or the native indigenous American people, they really weren't Americans because that's not they wasn't their name. But the indigenous people, many of us grew up calling them Indians. Just like they took their land, their homes, they're going into the brothers and sisters Yasharel's neighborhood and doing the same thing. And they're doing it through a manipulation. There's another way they get your home. There's another way. For those of you who don't want to sell, they're doing something called redlining. They're, they're, they're creating these neighborhoods within your own neighborhood and pushing you out of your neighborhood and looking at you like you the problem. They call it redlining. Okay. I'm going to, I already had one thing up, but I want to put up the definition of redlining. Okay. Redlining. Forgive me, beloved. Give me a chance to go back. I'm going to do it again. Redlining. The real estate definition. Did you notice how these same cities, and me, I'm coming from near Philly. I'm not in Philly anymore, but I grew up in Philadelphia. Suddenly, as long as y'all should rev, African-Americans, Blacks are in the neighborhood. It's West Philly, North Philly, South Philly, Northeast Philly. But when the Edomites come, they even change the name of the, of, of the neighborhood. It's crazy. And you are priced right out of the place you grew up in decades. Hmm. What is redlining? It is the practice of denying a credit-worthy African applicant a loan for housing in a certain neighborhood, even though the applicant may otherwise be available, eligible for the loan. We'll see, there's multiple ways to do redlining. I'm just dropping knowledge because this thing is going on all over the place. And if you look, your neighborhood, at first it looks like it's getting fixed up, baby, they're trying to take it, okay? And they don't even want to pay you the value that they're going to try to make it. When they're there, how is it one behind lives somewhere and the value is low, according to them? Another behind move into the same building and the value goes up. Mm. Redlining. Here's the other thing. For those of you that won't sell and won't give it up, you can live in a neighborhood where your house is valued at $90,000, $100,000. They come in the neighborhood, put, like I said, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 worth of upgrades, and suddenly... The house that they live in that is identical to the house you live in is valued at three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. What does that do to your house? Suddenly, the taxes you paid six, seven hundred dollars a year become five, six thousand dollars a year. And if you're not watching the mail and if you're not understanding what's happening, and you're not paying that brand new tax that you wasn't ready for, that $500 more a month, every month tax, or it come once a year. Now here come the sheriff.
to take your house. So they're going into our neighborhoods, doing what we could never do, and stealing people's homes through manipulation of the so-called laws, okay? Even to the point of offering you far less for something that's of more value. Anybody here that ever watch HGTV, they got something called cops. When they go and uh, they fix houses and they want to give the house a price after they fix the house up, they look at the cops, the comparable home prices in the neighborhood so that they know how to price that house in order to sell it. Well, if you're in a neighborhood and suddenly somebody told me, you know, they starting to build these, these houses around the corner, they selling them for $250,000, $350,000. But they told me, whew, I'm going to get $75,000 for my house. Your house on a comp level, you're about to be robbed, bluff. I want to put this out there because this is proliferating. It's going on all through Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, it's already going on in cities all over this country. As far as Philadelphia goes, you have a lot of people coming out of New York. They want to they wanted to come into Philadelphia. The living is cheaper for them. Or some of them are flooding Jersey, although Jersey's taxes are far higher. Okay. California is running into Texas. They're going down south. They're just flooding. But they're taking people's neighborhoods. I wonder who, which people neighborhood do you think they're taking? Hmm. And price you out. If you won't sell it, they're going to raise the prices of all the houses around you and make that tax base higher so that they hope you don't recognize the tax change of how they valued your house, how they assessed its value, and they take that baby to sheriff's cell. I'm just telling you why, because my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm. Then once they do that, they can create an enclave, their own neighborhood. Why? Because they do it through something called a rationing device, beloved, a rationing device. Mm. That's something you learn in economics. All right. In order to keep one thing for one group of people, but remove another group of people. In economics, they call it a rationing device. Definition, rationing refers to an artificial control on the distribution of scarce resources, food items, industrial products, etc. Okay, let me see. Hmm. Wait a minute. Here, I'm going to give you an example of a rationing device to keep you out of a neighborhood. If they price your neighborhood once they go in and start taking over, if they price the houses at $300,000 and you can't afford a $300,000 house, the rationing device has just gone into effect. Only those who can afford a $300,000 or above house will live in your neighborhood. Everybody who has less money is removed. They use something called a rationing device in order to remove you, okay? I am telling you so that you know. And if they really, really, really want your houses, make them pay for it, beloved. That rationing device can work for you or against you if you understand it. You know, when the Most High spoke about my people perish or suffer for lack of knowledge, it is not just scripture. It's lack of knowledge about these things were done intentionally to us to leave us in the dark so that we could be a people robbed and spoiled. But you see, the curse is now in reverse. It's not going to work. And there's another thing going on. They've gone in all these cities. They're building, building, building. They want to live by the trains and the bus routes. They don't care that you live there. They just they want you out. Okay. I find it funny that the police barely come, barely do anything when 
Yashavel and people of Tone lived in areas, but suddenly when the Edomites come, the police are there, and, you know, the, the, the quality of life is supposedly going up. But the goal in the meantime, you're starting to see you, you've been pushed out. Well, you need that knowledge. When they send in you, we'll buy your house. Don't go buy that little bit of money them people are asking you for. They want your neighborhood. They don't just want your house. They want everybody out so they can come in and take it, just like they did the natives. But you see, the curses have been loosed. The Bible says, the scripture says, the earth will no longer hide her blood. She is disclosing the murders. What does that mean? The natives, the indigenous people are not Yasharel. However, the Edomites who committed mass genocide, it didn't just happen in Canada where those mass graves or all those graves of all those so-called Native American children are. There were 350 schools like that right here in America. Okay. Mistreating, abusing, and murdering those Native American children. There was also something where when they stopped the schools, they were going in all the way up to, if I got it right, 1996, taking the children from their parents and sending them off to white homes to be adopted so that they could be assimilated. Okay? Now, many of you might say, well, I don't see where that even matters. We talking about Yasharel. Oh, it matters. Because the same thing they were doing to them, they do to what Yasharel. They would give parents trumped up charges, give them felonies, particularly during the time of crack, but it still goes on. Give the mother a felony, claim they can't find the father, and put that child up for adoption. Breaking up Yasharel's community, beloved. My people perish for lack of knowledge. You need to open your eyes. Not saying they aren't, but we just going to open them a little bit more, Okay. I mean, there is so much building going on all over this country. But the earth is disclosing the murders. That It's disclosing the blood. It's disclosing the corruption. They're trying to take many cities where Yasharel lives. But what happened? These builders who are using substandard material, these developers, these owners, these corporations, they're so greedy, they're not even making sure that the safety standards are up to code. They're not going in and correcting what they know is wrong. And what occurred in Florida is a testament to what's going on all over this country. What occurred with the indigenous people's children and the brutality that they suffered also occurred to Yasharel's children. You see, we weren't just alligator babies, the babies. No, 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 no. During enslavement, those children, many times they only got one set of clothes once a year. They ran around many times where they didn't have clothes covering their private parts. So here you have the sexual deviant who the pedophiles ran amok on Yasharel's children during enslavement. This, these exposures that are going on, this is going on all over the world. That's why the world is rising up. The indigenous people are showing what happened to them. But it happened to Yashuel's children, too. Yes, it did. Many people think, well, that ain't going on no more. You better remember what happened at that border down there in Texas with the so-called illegal aliens. I, and what did they do to the children? They put them in cages. As a matter of fact, did they ever find what, over 500 children missing? Nobody talk about it. Maybe they all forget. No, 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 beloved. You need to keep your eyes open. As a matter of fact, scriptures say, watch. You got to watch. You have to watch and be aware. And never forget the history because the history of what happened to them 
also happened to us. They had those children eaten off the ground. Who? The enslaved children of Yashorev. Many of the brutalities faced by the indigenous people were some of the same brutalities faced by Yashorev's children. They were left malnourished, starved, brutalized. Corrupted in an education system that never wanted to build them up for who they are. My people perish. My people suffer for lack of knowledge. Most of us never learned economics, the rationing device, the supply and demand. If you are a brother or sister and you're living in the city and the Edomites are coming wanting to buy your house, then that's telling you supply and demand. The demand is high. But the supply is low. What does that mean? It drives the price up. When the demand is higher than the supply, it drives the price up. So don't let them give you some low ball offer and you run off somewhere because you ain't never had $70,000. Do the comps. What does that mean? Check how much are they buying these other houses for. If you're going to sell, get your money's worth. Don't let them rob you. Okay? The curse is in reverse. And it's not going to stop. We are going to see this thing increase all over this country. That's why they keep talking about new variants of certain diseases, trying to lie, trying to trick. Because you know the angel of light cares for you so much. The angel of light wants to buy your house and give you a better lifestyle. You get the money, you spend the first $20,000, then you get out somewhere else trying to buy a house. And they're telling you, if you want to live like you was living in the area, like now it's going to cost you $250,000. You stand there looking crazy. What? They gave me $70,000. Well, the lowest price we can give you for a smaller house, $250,000. They playing the game with people's homes and with this real estate market. And my people suffer for lack of knowledge because they didn't want us educated enough to know the games and the tricks they played. They took crafty counsel. See, this thing did not just go into one area, beloved. It just covered this, this broken down education system. Didn't want you to know politics. Then you know how the game was played. Didn't want you educated because you can see they're trying to pull the wall over your eyes. But I will say this. The curse is in reverse. You do not have to forgive a murderer for murdering your loved one. You have the right to grieve them and feel however you fit. Now, if you remember what I said in the beginning, Yahoo said, Take no pity. No pity. You got some of us being taught in Christian church, and yes, I was raised in Christian church, but the Lord caught me. Ain't no way in the world. Especially knowing you hated me? I don't think so. It's all right not to pity the enemy. Particularly when the curse is running, because you ain't seen nothing yet. And they're telling you what they're doing, and it's right in your face. Anytime you keep saying this thing about a purge hmm. Hmm. to depopulate, I wonder where we've heard depopulation at. You got to watch. You got to watch below the rationing device. Trying to take, and in many time cases have already done so, taking your home, taking your neighborhood. Get your money's worth. And if you don't want to sell, they've got laws. These people, how is it that the law works for them and don't work for us? You, you need to call folks to account. You need, if that councilman, if that senator won't do right by you, you know, there's something called the vote to get rid of them. Okay? Because it's in your face, beloved. And remember, you are blessed and not cursed. This thing is ending. And just to give you a little bit of encouragement, but to also be honest, don't look for it to get better for them, because not. It's going to get worse. Just a word. Shalom, beloved. Let me find where I was. Yes. I'm on this computer, and uh, I have to find all the working pieces. Watch. Keep your eyes open. Babylon is truly falling. I don't care what lie that angel would like to tell you. you Got to watch. A word. Shalom. 
you know, I hope this thing stopped. I don't think it did. Nope. Shalom, beloved.